Welcome to Mancrime. Today we shall be looking at acid and base balance and acid base imbalances. Acid base balance in the human body is one of the most paramount physiologic process. In this tutorial, we intend to impact a basic understanding of acid base balance in the human body while providing a systematic way of approaching patients who present with conditions causing alteration in the normal pH. The human body experiences four main types of acid-base disorders, that is metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, and respiratory alkalosis. Therefore, in this presentation, we shall look at the pH in details, then we, have, then we look at the buffer systems, and then we look at each of the acid-base disorders and their compensation. We start with defining a pH. What is a pH? A pH is a negative log of hydrogen ions. And hydrogen ions are protons in nature. And a pH scale is a measure of how acidic or basic a solution is. Therefore, solutions with lower concentration of hydrogen ions have a higher pH and are considered basic. On the other hand, Solutions with higher concentration of hydrogen ions have a lower pH and are considered acidic. Acids are generally hydrogen donors, and bases are hydrogen ion acceptors, or they give up on hydroxide ions in solution. Acids and bases can be either strong or weak. In strong acids or bases, they dissociate completely, while weak acids or bases dissociate partially in a solution. In the human body, homeostasis of pH is tightly controlled. Extracellular fluid having a pH of 7.4 and blood having a pH range of 7.35 to 7.45. This one is of a major importance in this presentation. And whenever there is a pH of less than 6.8 or greater than 8.0, Debt is imminent. When we have a blood pH below 7.35, it's known as acidosis, and alkalosis is when we have a pH of above 7.45 in blood. Small changes in pH can lead to major disturbances in this homeostatic balance, and most enzymes function only within a narrow pH ranges. Then acid-base balance can also affect electrolytes, for example, sodium, potassium, and chloride ions. It can also affect hormones. The body usually produces more acids than bases, because acids can be taken in with foods and also produced by metabolism of lipids and protein. Also, cellular metabolism produces carbon dioxide. When we look at the control of these acids, we have what's known as buffer systems. Buffer systems take up hydrogen ions or release hydrogen ions as conditions change in the human body. A buffer system usually pairs a weak acid and a base, and they exchange a strong acid or a base for a weak one. This eventually results in a much smaller pH change. We have some of the first line defense against pH shifts which are the chemical buffer system, for example, bicarbonate buffer system, phosphate buffer system, and protein buffer system. And then the second line of defense against a pH shift is a physiologic buffer, that is a respiratory mechanism and renal mechanism. Let us then move into each of these buffers. We start with the bicarbonate buffer. Sodium bicarbonate and carbonic acids are the main carbonic buffers here. And we maintain a ratio of carbonic acid to sodium bicarbonate at a ratio of 20 to 1. Then the phosphate buffer is the major intracellular buffer. Protein buffers include hemoglobin, which work in the blood and interstitial fluid, 
the carboxyl group gives up on hydrogen ions and the amino group accepts hydrogen ions. And some of the side chains that can buffer hydrogen ions are present in all the 27 amino acids. And the physiologic mechanisms that help in adjusting or correcting pH changes include respiratory mechanism and renal mechanism. Starting with the respiratory mechanism, we mainly focus on the exhalation of carbon dioxide. The respiratory mechanism is a powerful mechanism but only works with volatile acids and generally it does not affect fixed acids, for example lactic acid. The body pH can be adjusted by changing the rate and the depth of breathing. The second system is the kidney excretion. The kidneys can eliminate large amounts of acid and also excrete bases. They can conserve and produce bicarbonate ions. The kidney excretion or kidney mechanism is the most effective regulator of the pH and if kidneys fail, pH balance fails. How are the rates of correction. The buffer function almost instantaneously and respiratory mechanisms take several minutes to hours while renal mechanisms take several hours to days. Let's look at each of these buffer systems. The first line of defense against any pH shift we said is the chemical buffer system comprising of bicarbonate buffer system, phosphate buffer system, and protein buffer system. And the second line of defense is the physiologic buffers, including of respiratory mechanism and renal mechanism. What is an acid base imbalance? Whenever we have a pH of less than 7.35 in blood, we call it acidosis. And a pH of greater than 7.5 is known as alkalosis. The body's response to each of these acid-base imbalance is called compensation. And this compensation may be either complete if it brings back the pH into the normal limits, or it can be partial compensation if the range still is outside the normal. In compensation, if an underlying problem is metabolic in nature, Hyperventilation or hypoventilation can help, and this is known as respiratory compensation. On the other hand, if the problem is respiratory, the renal mechanism can bring about metabolic compensation. Let's start by looking at each of these acid base disorders, starting with acidosis. The principal effect of acidosis is by depressing the central nervous system through the depression in synaptic transmission. Therefore, these patients will present with conditions with features of generalized body weakness, deranged central nervous system functions are the greatest threat in these patients. Therefore, we may have disorientation, coma, or even death in severe acidosis. In alkalosis, we have over-excitability of the central and the peripheral nervous systems. Therefore, these patients will present with numbness, lightheadedness, and it can cause nervousness, muscle spasms or tetany, convulsions, loss of consciousness, or death. How does alkalosis and acidosis occur? Acidosis occurs when there is accumulation of acids or a loss of base in the blood causing an increased concentration of hydrogen ions dropping the pH levels below 7.35 and alkalosis occurs when there is a loss of an acid or an accumulation of a base. This one will lead to decreased concentration of hydrogen ions in blood leading to a pH rise. Respiratory acidosis. 
Respiratory acidosis occurs as a result of carbonic acid excess that is caused by blood levels of carbon dioxide above 45 mm of mercury. It can also result from hypercapnia, which are high levels of carbon dioxide in blood. Some of the chronic conditions which are associated with respiratory acidosis include the depression of the respiratory center in the brain, which controls breathing rate, and this one can result from the use of drugs or head trauma. And another condition that is associated with respiratory acidosis is paralysis of the respiratory or chest muscles. And last we can have emphysema. In acute conditions, we have some of them such as adult respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary edema, and pneumothorax. So all these ones start with a respiratory failure, which causes a buildup of carbon dioxide and a reduction in the pH, or excess carbon dioxide in blood known as hypercapnia. In compensating respiratory acidosis, kidneys eliminate hydrogen ions and retain bicarbonate ions whenever acidemia is present. This one is known as renal compensation. What are the signs and symptoms of respiratory acidosis? Like we said, the principal effect of acidosis is the depression of the central nervous system through a reduction in synaptic transmission. These patients will present with breathlessness, restlessness, lethargy and disorientation, tremors, convulsions, and coma. The respiratory rate will be rapid, then it will be gradually depressed. And the skin will be warm and flushed because of a vasodilation caused by excess carbon dioxide in blood. In treating this respiratory acidosis, we need to restore ventilation, give intravenous lactose solutions, and treat the underlying dysfunction or disease that has led to the development of respiratory acidosis. Then respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis results from carbonic acid deficit. In these patients, we have a carbon dioxide pressure less than 35 millimeters of mercury or hypocapnia. Respiratory alkalosis is the most common form of acid-base imbalance and the primary cause is hyperventilation. Some of the conditions which stimulate respiratory centers, for example, oxygen deficiency at high altitudes, pulmonary disease and congestive heart failure that causes hypoxia, acute anxiety, fever and anemias, early salicylate intoxication, liver cirrhosis, and gram-negative sepsis, lead to the development of respiratory alkalosis. Then how do we compensate respiratory alkalosis? The compensation of alkalosis is by kidneys conserving hydrogen ions and excreting bicarbonate ions. And in managing these patients, we have to treat the underlying cause and breathe into a paper bag and then we can administer intravenous chloride containing solution to replace the lost bicarbonate ions. The next derangement is metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis occurs because of a bicarbonate deficit where we have blood concentration of bicarbonate below 22 milliequimoles per liter. Some of the common causes of metabolic acidosis are a loss of bicarbonate through either diarrhea or renal dysfunction, accumulation of acids, for example ketones and lactic acids, and also a fail of kidneys to excrete hydrogen ions. The symptoms and signs associated with metabolic acidosis include headache, lethargy, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, coma, and death. In compensation of metabolic acidosis, the body will increase ventilation, increase renal excretion of hydrogens, potassium exchange with excess hydrogen ions in extracellular fluid, 
and treatment of metabolic acidosis includes intravenous administration of lactate containing solution to be converted into bicarbonate ions in the liver. And then metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis arises from a bicarbonate excess that is a concentration of blood bicarbonate levels greater than 26 milliequimos per liter. The common causes of metabolic alkalosis are excess vomiting, that's loss of stomach acid, excess use of alkaline drugs and certain diuretics, endocrine disorders, heavy ingestion of antacids and severe dehydration. And then in compensating metabolic alkalosis, this one actually commonly occurs with renal dysfunction and therefore we cannot count on the kidneys. Respiratory compensation is usually difficult unlike the renal compensation, so hyperventilation is limited by hypoxia. And some of the features that these patients will present with are respiratory slowness and shallowness, hyperactive reflexes and features of tetany. This one is often related to depletion of electrolytes, therefore patients will be having actual tachycardias and dysrhythmias. And then how do we treat metabolic alkalosis? The treatment of metabolic alkalosis includes replacement of electrolytes which have been lost, treating the underlying disorders and also giving intravenous chloride containing solutions to replace the lost chloride ions. How do we diagnose acid-base imbalances? In the diagnosis of these disorders, you have to note whether the pH is low, that is acidosis, or the pH is high. Once you've done that, you then decide which value is outside the normal range and could be the cause of the problem. If the cause is the change in carbon dioxide pressures, the problem is respiratory. And if the cause is high, is bicarbonate ions, the problem is metabolic. Then you need to look at the value that doesn't correspond to the observed pH change. If it's inside the normal range, then there is no compensation occurring. And if it's outside the normal range, the body is partially compensating for the problem.